Since installing the latest firmware on the Dwarf 2, I've been very impressed with the improvement to the quality of the on-screen captures. In this video I'm going to capture a range of objects to show this, but first of all let's uh, focus on Jupiter. I'm going to use Jupiter's moons, you can see I've got fairly good focus here, and whilst we're at it you can see how Jupiter looks through the Dwarf 2, and I'm going to manipulate the exposure to see how that affects the image, whether we can see any detail on the disc, which would be ambitious considering the aperture and the focal length of the Dwarf 2, but I know that I'll be asked if I don't do it, so I'm going to drop the exposure right down and try and get rid of some of that brightness, see if there's any hint of detail on the disc of Jupiter whatsoever. I don't think there's going to be, but it will put that to rest. There you go, and that's how Jupiter looks when it's exposed for the planet. Um, I think it's best to have it exposed so you can see all the Jovian moons, that looks really good. Um, so it's quite interesting to see the dance of the Jovian moons around the planet. So before we go ahead and take some images of deep sky targets, we're going to take some dark frames, takes 10 minutes, and then calibrate. So I'm going through the calibration style so the Dwarf 2 knows where it is. It's calibrated, and let's pick Andromeda as a nice easy first target to go to. So it's just going to do a final plate solve to put it in the centre of the sensor in the centre of the screen. And there we have it, you can just about see it there. So the next thing to do will be play about with the exposures. Now, before the firmware update I was managing about 6 seconds, but now I'm going to go for 15 seconds and see what we get. And let's really go for it and take a hundred exposures of every object we captured tonight. And we're going to start that now. Now wait for it. There's a trick now. It's brilliant. Look, the unlinked stretch. Thank you, Quiv, and the team at Dwarf Lab for getting that sorted because now we get a nice colour balanced stretched image straight off the bat on the screen and we can see that we're so far stacked 20 images so I'm just going to tweak the histogram and try and get a bit more contrast darken that background, bring out those dust lanes in Andromeda and you can see the neighbouring galaxy the uh, M110 really clearly now um, this is Big improvement on my last effort before the firmware update, but I don't think I've nailed the focus looking at it if I go close in. Um, yeah, so I'll tweak that before the next image. So this is now showing the image on screen at the end of the stack, because that's a new thing that's been introduced before the image would disappear. Now we get to play with it on screen before um, before it just went straight to the library like I'm showing here, and you could just go into the library and look at it but now it's on screen to play with before it does that. And uh, yeah, my GoPro doesn't really show it on screen very well, but now, because I'm gonna go after some nebulae, I'm gonna pop the sunglasses on the Dwarf 2 with the ultra high contrast filter, and that's gonna help sort of cut through some of the light pollution in my Bortle 6 stroke 7 skies. And we're gonna go after the Horsehead Nebula in Ursa Major, Ursa Major, sorry. Orion. <laughs> so we can see the flame, bright star out attack. Uh, before when I was taking six second exposures of this I couldn't really see the horse head but I can see it clearly there and we just quickly fast forwarded through. We've done a hundred exposures at this point and I'm doing now the image is on the screen so we can tweak it and get a nice final image there and I'm really impressed with how that's looking. Have a quick look at it in the, the library there. Uh, whatever it's called. Now I'm going to go on to something a bit more ambitious. This is the Rosette Nebulae. Um, I can tell that I'm on target because I can see NGC 2244 in the centre, um, which is the open cluster in the centre of the Rosette. So I'm going to do 100 exposures and let's see if we can see any of that hydrogen. Yep, after about 20 exposures we're starting to pick out that kind of rose shape of the hydrogen gas and the dust. So that's looking really great. You can see some field rotation kicking in at the edges now as the image is rotating to compensate for the field rotation. 
uh, which you get with altazimuth mounts. Again, just showing on my GoPro, it doesn't look as good on the GoPro. So this is why I've got screen capture software. Now, if I go for um, an object that's below the horizon, now, thanks to the update, it won't let you do that because before doing that, it would basically crash everything. And here's me trying to go for the beehive cluster, but a tree's in the way. So therefore I decided to go and have another crack at the Triangulum Galaxy and we'll do 100 exposures on that try and get a better image than I did previously and it's already better to be quite honest with you I can see a lot more of the structure of the galaxy that's looking quite nice on screen and finally I just thought I'd grab the Pleiades because it was nice and high in the sky just to see if we can see any of that reflection there Billy and you can on the bottom star Merup you can see a lot of what's known as the Merup reflection nebulae so what's basically happening is these blue super hot giant stars are radiating light and it's basically reflecting off the dust that's surrounding the stars hence the name reflection nebulae so that's showing quite nice actually I'm quite impressed so yeah that kind of that basically I just wanted to do a quick video to show you how the improvements have improved the on-screen captures for the electronic aided astronomy side of things thank you if you made it this far through the video and a special thanks goes out to my channel members and my patreons thank you so much it really helps and if you enjoyed this content please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification for more like it and hopefully i'll see you in the next video